Greetings friends, it's me John Ross and I'm here with another fun field science activity for you. Today we're talking mixtures and solutions and in the state of South Carolina we really begin getting into mixtures and solutions in the fifth grade. One of the things that we like to talk about is rate that an object, that solute, can dissolve within that solvent. And what are some factors that can impact that? Well, one thing that can impact how quickly or how slowly an object dissolves is temperature. So I've got a gallon pitcher of ice cold water. So I'm going to go ahead and pour a cup of ice cold water right here. Behind me, I have a hot pot. That hot pot is boiling some water. Now, it's really hot, so we do need to beware of the steam that's coming up out of it. Because if you're not careful, you might burn yourself. And I have, in fact, walked away with a first degree burn. I know, big you, but it still hurt uh, from waving my hand in front of the hot pot, embarrassingly enough. Nevertheless, I've got my cup of ice cold water. I've got my cup of hot water and for this first uh, activity we're going to be utilizing food coloring. So I've also got a couple little spoons here. That's one eighth of a teaspoon, another one eighth of a teaspoon. So I'm going to go ahead and put my one eighth of a teaspoon red food coloring up in here. Now I'm going to put that red food coloring behind the hot glass. Red for hot. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the blue blue for cold. Now if you want, you could use the same food coloring. Um, however, I just find it's easier for your students because we do subconsciously associate red hot, blue cold. Nevertheless, at that point I asked my kids, well alright children, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna allow these uh, couple spoons here to hang out over top of our cups which of these substances, uh, cups now, do you think the food coloring will dissolve the quickest within? Do you think it will be the hot cup, the cold cup, or perhaps they, there won't be any difference? You know, that's a question for them to discuss with their teammates. Nevertheless, um, after they've come up with their hypotheses and they've shared some of those, we then count down from three, two, one. and we allow them to simply observe. And what they should see, of course, is that the hot cup, the food coloring is spreading out more quickly within that one. The cold cup, the food coloring, while it is spreading out, it's spreading out at a slower rate. And that makes me think of our water dance which we previously shared with you. So you can bring that back into play, perhaps with your students, and talk about how when you're cold, you're moving real slow, real slow. But as you heat up, you start moving faster and faster and faster until you're going crazy. And that's what's going on there with your food coloring. The red food coloring, that water was moving super fast, those molecules. So the food coloring was, of course, able to spread out more quickly. Whereas the blue, it was moving slowly. Those molecules of water were moving slowly. Now, we can do the same thing to repeat, to reiterate with your students. But instead of using food coloring, we're going to use salt. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill up my second glass with some water. like I got an ice cube up in there, so I'm going to fish it out, toss it out, and now I'm going to add some hot water to my second glass. And again, this is just in an effort to repeat and reiterate how altering the temperature of your solvent can impact the rate that the solute is able to dissolve. So I've got my teaspoons, and I can ask my children the, the same question. 
what do you predict will happen um, to the salt as you add it to the hot and the cold? What's the, uh, will there be a difference? Will one dissolve more quickly than the other? Will they dissolve at the same rate? Once they've shared some of their hypotheses, we can then uh, complete the activity. So we count down from three, two, one, go. And I don't know if you can see from afar, but it appears that the cup with the hot water, more salt dissolved as it was poured in. Now, of course, salt ended up landing, settling at the bottom of both cups, but I would say that there's more in the cold glass. Now, we want to stir up the remaining salt, but we want to stress to our kids that since we got two glasses, you, your kid's probably going to want to share the responsibility. So we want little Johnny and Susie both to stir, but we want them to stir in a way that they're stirring together. You don't want Johnny stirring real fast and Susie stirring real slow because that's going to impact the results of our activity. So I instruct my kids to go ahead and insert, after I've modeled, nice and easy we stir. Insert your spoons, and we're going to stir up, and I usually, you know, 10, 15 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, now it's time to further examine. And what I have seen here is that the hot glass, after stirring 15 seconds worth, pretty much all of the salt has dissolved. There's no salt that, as far as I can see, remaining on the bottom. However, the cold glass, we got a little uh, condensation happening, so we have to wipe that down. But the cold glass, there is still salt at the bottom. Some of it, when I stirred it, did dissolve, but there is still salt there nonetheless. So it allows your kids to see, again, that altering the temperature of the solvent impacts how quickly the solute can dissolve. Thank you, friends. I hope you enjoyed our fun-filled activity, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.